to try and position this in the, in the right spot. Does that work? Yes. Cool. Um, firstly, if, if, hi, I'm a, um, if anyone in the back actually managed to get that QR code to work, I'd be curious to know about it. Um, okay, this is the probably the largest collection of smarter people than me that I've ever presented to, so um, I'm going to do a live demo. Uh, this is nothing more fun than a, a live demo that breaks in front of smart people. Uh, but you're, you're all in a food cone quite now, right? So you don't have that. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to talk, I'm really interested in um, Git uh, and using Git in smarter ways, and I guess pretty much everyone here uses Git, so I thought you might enjoy this even though um, it's not OpenStack specific, um, but hopefully you'll find some useful uh, things here or at least food for thought. So I'm going to talk about two tools that I've built, um, if I have time, which I probably don't. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about at least one, which is Git Depths, um, and then you can explode if we have time and um, yeah, grab the answer for Q&A. So, um, oh, that's interesting. Why did we go to that? We want to go to here. Okay, so Git Depths is a tool for uh, automatically detecting uh, dependencies between Git commits. Uh, so, what does that actually mean? Um, because by dependencies, I mean textual dependencies. Um, so what that kind of means, um, the way I, I see it, the way I built this tool, is which commits would I need in my branch in order to be able to cherry pick a commit without conflicts. Um, so if we take a commit which happens to be from Cinder, simple, uh, this is just um, one hard kid a commit, um, we can see it's removing two lines, the red lines, it's adding a line, the green one, um, and there's a bit of context there. So if we wanted to cherry pick this commit somewhere, it would only uh, cherry pick without conflicts if we had the two red lines and the surrounding context already in the branch. Um, so that means whichever commits provide those red lines in the context are the ones that this hunk uh, depends on. So the way that we, we calculate that is probably uh, fairly intuitive. We, we, we take the commit we're looking at, uh, that we want to analyze the, the, tech, the dependencies of. We do a diff of that with this parent to get basically the, you know, the hunks like the one we just saw. Um, and then for each hunk, we want to get blame on the parent to see where those lines, the red lines and the context lines came from. So looking at that same commit again, um, now you can see on the left-hand side we've got um, the, the commits um, that, that represent where those uh, lines came, came from. Um, so in this case, that tells us that the, there are two dependencies of this particular hunk, uh, the 7F1 and the, the 531. Um, and then notice the 531 um, is only a dependency because it's required as context, because generally if you don't have the right context then you can't apply um, a particular change. Of course you can change the, the, the context requirements when you're applying uh, things, whether that's like a a straightforward patch or a, a cherry pick or a git uh, by mail or whatever. Um, so, okay, that's that's an interesting concept maybe, but why, why should we care about it? Um, well, if you if you just think of the traditional uh, kind of chronological parent-child relationships that we have in git history, that doesn't tell us anything about the um, the way the content of the commits relate to each other, because you can have a, you know, a parent that modifies one file and child that modifies another. And just because one's a child, the, the other way doesn't, they're not related. Um, so with a dependency analysis, we can answer interesting questions like, can we swap the order of two commits um, without causing conflicts? Can we delete a parent? Can we uh, take a, a child and transplant it somewhere else to another branch? Uh, by the way, that's a quick plug for another tool I've written called Git Transplant. And if you, all these slides are online, um, I can give you the link at the end if you missed the QR code or the, the short link. Um, and that is hyperlinked, so you can follow all these uh, resources afterwards if you're interested. Um, another use case is uh, if you want to figure out you're only making a change to an area of code that maybe you haven't messed around with much before and you're not sure which other contributors have been uh, responsible for working on that code, then you can look at the dependencies um, to maybe a certain depth in the dependency tree and get a list of names of people who have contributed to those lines that you're changing and then you know you can you know might be worth adding those people to your Garrett review. Um, 
um, it, it, it can act as a predictor of at least the minimum amount, amount of effort it might take to support a commit or budget commits to another branch. Um, and you could also uh, take a whole sequence of commits and then automatically group them into related sub subtopics, um, which might be useful as well. Um, and then there's, there's probably other, other things that I haven't thought of, and I'd love to hear other ideas of how this could be used. <coughs> okay, so uh, implementation quickly. It's a Python, Python module, command line interface. Um, there's a, an optional, optional web interface for uh, visualizing things. Visualizing the dependency tree it uses PyGit2, which depends on libgit2, um, and it's on GitHub, not Garrett, sorry, um, but uh, that could easily be changed. If it needs to be. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to, for the live demo to take a, a, a real-world um, use case uh, or challenge that a colleague of mine posed, which is he needed to backport um, this change in Cinder from Rocky to Pike, and when you just apply, uh, do a, a straightforward cherry pick, you get merge conflicts. And he said, could your tools, uh, is that, that review, by the way, in case you care. Um, and he said, could your tools help with this? And so, well, the answer is, is yes, to some degree. Um, <clears throat> so if we, if we get the, um, the commit char uh, of the, the commit we want to back for, we can tag it just for you know, readability. Um, check out stable pike. And then we have this magic command, um, which I'm, rather than explain that now, I'm gonna do the live demo so you don't fall asleep. Um, okay, so, um, switch into the Cinder repository, um, do the, the tagging, check out the um, Pike branch, just to prove that it's not gonna cherry pick um, straight away, there's your conflicts. So we bought the cherry pick. Um, so we're going to uh, see how, how the tool can help out. So um, we run git depth, so, so there's some help. Um, uh, which, yeah, it comes with various options. You can change the number of lines of context and various other useful things. Um, so if we basically say we want to analyze um, this particular kit commit and find the dependencies of this commit, but we want to exclude any dependencies which are already in Pike. Uh, and if you haven't seen the syntax um, of the, the like carry exclamation point uh, thing, that's just basically saying give me a, a singleton range of this commit because Git Depth expects a range, a revision range rather than a, um, a single uh, commit ish. Um, so we run that. Um, and Blame is quite slow, so it's not like instant. There may be some things I can do to, to speed it up. Um, but it's, it's said, okay, there are, there are two dependencies of this commit. So in, straight away we know, okay, this backporting job is maybe not going to be too much effort, maybe. Um, and if we want to know, you know what, those, what those dependencies were, um, then we can add the minus L option, and we can also um, add a minus R option to recursively uh, iterate the dependency tree, so are the dependencies of the dependencies of the dependencies and so on, uh, so we get all the commits we need for the, the, the backport to work. Um, and then we run that, and, and it will give us a git log like output, which gives us a bit more detail. Um, and it will also tell us in a second or two that there's an extra dependency. One of the, one of the dependencies it's found also depends on the other dependency. Um, and it's still searching to see if there are any others because it was recursive. Um, and if you found that sort of getting your head around what it's just shown us, um, then there's some good news because the minus s option starts up a, a web server and then we can uh, switch back to here. And this is what the, uh, the web server looks like. Um, so then we can just put in, you know, detect dependencies for to backport. So I hit submit and there's a nice UE bug where it just pretends that nothing's happening at this point. But actually if you, uh, oh I haven't got, there, there we go. So you can see it's received the, uh, HTTP request, and here we go. So it's now showing us this is the, the commit that we um, want to back for, and we can see that it depends on this one and this one. And there's a little plus sign here, so we can click on that, and then that will you know, recurse for that particular dependency and, and see if that uh, commit depends on anything else. And it says, okay, no, no new commits or dependencies found for that one. We do the same for this one. Um, which is, this is kind of the manual mouse clicky 
version of what I did earlier with the minus r option. Um, and now here, it, this is the uh, this corresponds to the um, uh, this extra dependency corresponds to this one that I mentioned before. So one of the dependencies depends on the other one. It's a bit confusing here because like the lines all just go vertically. But if I sort of squiggle it around, then you can kind of see um, that you know there's just two um, dependency two routes through the tree, I guess. Oh, by the way, you can also double click on. Um, is that going to work? Yes, it does. Cool. Um, you can double click on a commit and it will just jump straight to that commit in you know, whatever uh, application you've got set up to handle that. Um, okay, so so that's the web interface. Um, and so what that means now is that we can, we, we've got those two commits that we know are the dependencies, so we can cherry pick them in reverse order. And yes, I really am an incredibly fast typer. I'm not cheating at all. Um, and so we cherry pick those, and then finally we cherry pick the one that we wanted to uh, cherry pick originally, and it applies cleaning. So we're kind of done with the um, backlog. Of course, at this point, I said it's a partial solution because um, you obviously you can't just trust this. You need to get peer review. You need to do CI. You need to do you know all the testing and all the, the sensible things. But at least this gives you a starting point that uh, it reduces some of the work hopefully. Um, so the the fast kind of version of that would be if I if I just save the dependencies that the tool output to a file here, um, so that the first column, the, so the, the first line is saying uh, the, the commit 46B8 depends on the second column, the F36F, and then it, and then the second line says it also depends on D9AF, and then the third line is the is the other one saying that the one of the dependencies depends on the other. So um, if I reset um, back to the upstream stable pipe. Um, then I can do a topological sort of that and then reverse it um, and then feed that into Git cherry pick. Um, and it just basically traverses the dependency tree from the bottom up in the right order and it just does the whole thing instantly. So that's the, uh, the sort of quick way of doing it. Um, so that is that uh, for Git depths. Um, how am I doing for time? Here it's gone, so I've got plenty of time. <laughs> Twelve and a half minutes now. Um, I, this is going to be very quick. Um, so Git Explode is another tool which is built on. Um, do I have oh, got some slides here? I don't know why that's gone. So. Okay, Git Explode. Boom. Um, okay, so it explodes a linear sequence of Git commits into new independent branches, which my topic branches, are, which are just numbered, you know, one, two, n. Um, and what it's doing there really is, is creating a fresh history um, where the, the, the Git uh, history tree mirrors the dependency tree rather than just mirroring like a chronological you know, uh, commit and, and merge kind of uh, tree. Um, so yeah, if, uh, if a child has a parent, uh, child C has a parent P, then, then that means that C texturally depends on P. Um, and it uses merge commits to represent simultaneous dependencies, and I can go into that in detail now. Um, so why do we care about this? Why is this useful? You, it's, it can be used to clean up messy branches um, and make the reviews that you're submitting easier, so you can regroup things automatically by topic, um, you know, spit out refactorings from bug fixes and, and new features, for example. Um, if you had a big messy private code base that you're kind of, you need to publish to the world, you're too embarrassed to publish the history in its current state, and then you could use this maybe to clean it up. Um, you could uh, decompose changes, like if you've got a whole bunch of stuff that you want to port, um, rather than just trying to port it all in one go, you might want to decompose it into multiple independent things and then port each one of those separately. Um, and you know, breaking down giant commits, you can split it into hunks. I don't have a tool for doing that yet, actually, but it wouldn't be hard to write one. Um, and, then, and then you can apply this. Um, so like if you've got a giant pet ape, fixes kind of commit, you could maybe split it out and um, apply it onto topic branches. Uh, and again, you know, potential uh, new ideas um, from anyone I'd love to hear. Um, so again, it's a Python module, it reuses the library from Git Depths, it's also a GitHub, and the very quick demo to finish, and here's the help. Um, and so it just takes basically a, a base commit, um, and uh, it just like the 
beginning and end of the sequence of commits that you want to explode. Um, so for this one, I've got just a test repository. Um, I'll show you what it's like here. So it's basically just a tiny repository that creates two files. Each file has lines one to 10, like down here. Um, and then it, it just, you know, a bunch of, like one, one line changes to each of the files. So we change the third line of file A, third line of file B, eighth line of file A, and then again, the third line of file A. Um, so you'll probably notice um, that this last commit that changes the third line of file A will depend on the previous commit that uh, changed the third, also changed the second line of file A. Um, so now we can just do basically git explode of, and then, so here I'm starting from, I'm basically just exploding the last four commits, just as an example, um, and going all the way up to the tip of the branch, which is master. Boom, and then it, so it's, it's analyzed the dependencies and then it's uh, recreated these new topic branches uh, based on that and it shows you the git commands that it used to do that so you can kind of understand what it's done. Um, and if we reload here, then we can now see these new topic branches. So you can see there's this single topic that changes the eighth line of file A, uh, 